Back to Gary Shaw, the left foot pass looking for Williams, but uh, there we see Mew, he's got him covered at the moment. And he's one of the best defenders in the business, uh, Mew. Of course, Williams has kicked six goals and already had the third opponent at the ball back there by Ayers. Comes out to Shields, and that's a good mark. Mark the Shields out there in the short of half back, a hurried kick back, it's marked by Green. And Green gives the ball back to Kennedy, a bubble. Oh. oh, there's a charge now for Collins. Kennedy won't give it up. He'll good play by Kennedy. Out to Green. Back it goes to Parking Order. Hawthorne go back into attack. At the back there is oh, good mark to DP at a minute ago. A free kick, was it? Oh, the mark and a free kick. Please yourself. And he's played a great game. That's uh, eight mark, nine marks he's had. Even though Ricky Barham's kicked three goals, he's well on top. Gully's an improved player, this fella. No one ever dreamt that he was going to be a weak player by the build of him. Here he goes, D. Pierre Domenico from about 45 metres out. Doesn't make the distance. Keenan on the ground. Ball pushed out this time by McCormick. Good play, but he's grabbed. They're tackling hard. Both sides It's picked up by Matthews. In a bit of trouble here. They pounce on top of the ball. No one can get it clear, and the umpire's going to ball it up about 45 metres or 40 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Then 12 12 84, leading Collingwood by six points. 12 6 78. Well, Keenan virtually got that one. It's tuck, tuck off the pack of hand pass to judge a stab at goal. I think it'll be a goal, a goal. So there are two goals in front now, Hawthorne. 12 goals, 6 78, Collingwood to Hawthorne, 13 12 90. And that's three goals to uh, Ken Judge. And Ken two Judge. of those judges have come from the boundary line at this end. And this is uh, almost as good as the second one he kicked. Three goals to Judge. Good snapshot from Hawthorne answering the challenge. Great game. 13-12 to 12-6 on Sevens Big League from VFL Park. Knocked away by Payton, but he doesn't get it to a Hawthorne player. It's picked up by Dacos, who's come into his own uh, after a slow start. Yes, goes right across goal. He's doing a Graham Allen. Out to Morris. On to Green. Robertson is the runner. Robertson from half-back, dummied the hand pass, down towards half-forward, looking for Judge, who's got two opponents, Brown, he's played a great game for Collingwood, wins out again, well played Murray Brown, lobs it high, towards centre wing, underneath it is Green, and Marks, good grab. Played a good game too, Pete. Yes. Very impressed though with Brown though, I would say he'd be on the side to play Western Australia later in the year. D.P. Domenico at right half-forward. Just about lobbed in the goal square. Now he's gone for a pass. Judge shipped in beautifully. Oh, great mark. Got around Allen, who stood there. Well, actually, it broke away from Allen that time. He was a bit stiff feeding. You watch this. Came around nicely. He thought he had him covered, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. It had a bit of a, an off break on it, actually, in the air. He can do that with a football. Curveball, as in uh, baseball terminology. Ken Judge has kicked three. He got the last goal. Can he make it two in succession? It's a goal. Four goals to judge. He went out of the game in the second quarter with many other Hawthorne players, but has bounced back now with two quick ones. Sevens Big League is part of the 1984 Nissan VFL Premiership season. Early in the game, Hawthorne led by four goals, but there was only a couple of points in it at half time. Collingwood got to the lead in the third quarter. In the end, it was Hawthorne by 32 points. Major goal kickers for Hawthorne, Ken Judge got five. Matthews finished up with four after having at one stage won six and Brereton got three. All of those were in the first quarter. For Collingwood, Mark Williams, a brilliant first half, was absolutely superb. He added only one goal after the break when Chris Mew was moved onto him and Ricky Barham also finished up with four goals. Stats on the match, and we see that Collingwood had more kicks, marks and frees, but Hawthorne had 34 more handballs. And after the match, I saw out Hawthorne skipper Lee Matthews. Although Matthews was one of Hawthorne's better players on the day, he had five behinds on the board before he scored his first goal. Suffering from Achilles trouble, he put it down though to being just one of those days. I don't know, one of those days where I, early anyway, where I just couldn't get the ball on line. I, off the boot, I was quite happy with them, but they just kept waving at the end and it was sort of missing by a foot here and hitting the post there. And so all in all, it's quite frustrating when that happens because that's, you know, when you're playing up forward, the difference between kicking six points or six goals is, you know, is rather dramatic. You know, I think it was 10-2 to 9-11 at half time. So 
you know, we probably should have had a better break and we didn't. And they played well early in the third quarter. Fortunately, we, you know, got our heads down and, and had that break at three quarter time and went on in the last quarter. But, uh, you know, they were a weakened lineup, I suppose, today with injuries and suspensions and what have you. So, uh, you know, I suppose we were happy though to win. There was one reported player, Neville Shaw, by three umpires on a striking charge against Russell Shields of Hawthorne late in the final quarter. Time for our footy bet winners.